Hello, welcome to the second video in the Lab Tainer walkthrough series. Lab Tainers are virtual machine labs provided by the Naval Postgraduate School, built to give students hand-on experience with cybersecurity concepts. These labs and their manuals can be found at mps.edu. In this video, we explore the Lab Tainer ACL, which explores the access control lists as part of the system security and operations. We will explore the functionality of Linux ACL and to create a Trojan horse virus to obtain information of which we do not have access to. Like any lab tainer, we initialize the lab by running lab tainer and then the lab tainer's name, which for this lab is ACL. Once all necessary resources are downloaded, we can simply hit enter to start the lab. With the lab started, you will see three terminals for Bob, Alice, and Harry. We can log into each terminal with their provided usernames and passwords. First, we'd like to review existing file permissions. We can run share, cd shared data followed by ls-l in Alice's terminal to see the file permissions in the shared data directory. Notice that the accounting.txt file has a permission setting of -rw-rw. The first character, the dash, indicates if it's a file, a dash, or a directory, which would be D. The next group of three indicates owner user permissions. We can see that the owner user has read write permissions, no executable permissions because it is not an executable. The second group of three indicates group permissions. We can see that the group has read write permissions as well. The third group of three indicates other permissions, and we can see that the other has no permissions regarding the accounting file. Since Alice is expected to belong to the other category, we expect that she should not be able to view or edit the accounting.txt file. However, to our surprise, when we run the command cat accounting.txt as Alice, we are able to see its contents. Going back to our permission settings of -rw-rw, we realize that the plus at the end signifies that the file has an ACL in addition to standard Unix permissions. We run get facl accounting.txt to view the ACL permissions of the file. <clears throat> we notice that Alice has read permissions for the file, and Harry has read and write permissions for the file. We can now go over to Harry's terminal and run echo parentheses more stuff into shared data accounting.txt to demonstrate his ability to modify the file. We go back to Alice's terminal and view the contents of accounting.txt to see what Harry has added. As you can see, more stuff is now added to accounting.txt. We can attempt to edit the accounting.txt file as Alice and confirm that we do not have permissions to do so. As you can see, when we try to run the same echo command, it says permission denied. Now we want to practice setting an ACL. As Bob, we use set facl-m user alice r shared data bob bobstuff.txt to give alice permissions to read the bobstuff.txt file. The format of our command is set facl, the flags, control group, colon control group name, colon permissions, and then the file name. Our flag of dash m represents a request to modify. Our control group is a single user, u, and our user's name is Alice. And we would like to give our user permissions to read, r. We can now go back to Alice's terminal and confirm she can view bobstuff.txt. We also go to Harry's terminal and confirm that he still does not have permissions to read bobstuff.txt. As you can see, Harry gets permission denied. Now we want to practice setting a default ACL for a directory. As Alice, we want to define a default ACL for the shared data Alice directory, such that every new file she creates will be readable by Bob and herself, but not other users like Harry. Using our knowledge of set FACL commands, we can first give Bob default read permissions by running set FACL-dm 
U, Bob, R, share data Alice. Recall that our flag dash M means modify, and we introduce the flag dash D as default to signify a modification of default permissions. Once again, we use U for user control group, put in the user Bob, and give him read R permissions. We create a file in shared data Alice called test2.txt and check its permissions using get facl to see that Bob has read permissions. Note how Bob is listed with permission to read, but other also has permission to read. Since other represents anyone else in the system, basically the world, that means Harry will also have read permissions. We confirm this by going to Harry's terminal and viewing Alice's test.txt file. As you can see, when Harry views the file, he is able to see its contents, I love pie. We want to prevent anyone else other than Alice and Bob from viewing Alice's newly created files. So as Alice, we run the command setfacl-dmo colon colon dash dash x. We give other group executable access because why not? Note that the O stands for the other control group. Now if we run get facl and share data Alice, we will see that the other no longer has default read permissions, while Bob still has his default read permissions. Now we can create a test.txt file and confirm that Bob can still read it. And Harry can't read it, he gets a permission denied. Now let's have some fun with Trojan horses. When we revisit the ACL of sharedataaccounting.txt using getfacl, we see that Alice has reading permissions and Harry has read-write permissions, while Bob has no access at all. We want Bob to be able to obtain the contents of accounting.txt without obtaining access to the file directly. We can do this by creating a Trojan horse executable, tricking an innocent user into running our script that will copy over the information from accounting.txt. In Bob's shared data Bob folder, we find a script called fun, which contains this cute ASCII art of a dog. Knowing that Alice and Harry have reading permissions of accounting.txt, we can introduce commands to the script that first make a copy of accounting.txt and then give Bob viewing permissions of the copied file. We create a Trojan function in the fun file, and first we create a copy of accounting.txt called trojan.txt, which will be created in Bob's directory by the innocent user of the script. The innocent user will also then set the ACL of the file so that Bob can view the file. To make sure that the user can create a file in Bob's directory, we have to first run set facl m other read write executable share data Bob. Let's execute the script. Alice runs it. And now, all of a sudden, Bob can view the contents of accounting.txt through trojan.txt. We are able to replicate this in Harry's terminal as well. To confirm that Bob still does not have direct access to accounting.txt, we can run the script as Bob and discover some permission denied messages. And that's all for the ACL lab. Make sure you exit the lab terminal and run stop lab in the original terminal to save your work. See you in the next lab.